So in this video we're going to be looking at some of the big utes which are claimed to tow four and a half tonne. The Ram 1500 Bighorn, F-150, Tundra, Ranger V6 which can't tow four and a half tonnes but I put it in as a known quantity. And I'm not really going to go into the Silverado for reasons that will become apparent later on. So here's what we're going to take a look at. We're going to look at the dimensions, power to weight ratio, warranty, range, payload unhitched, some payload at towing 4,500 kilos, rear axle load limits as well, 3,500 and a summary. Now one thing I will say is that all of this stuff is complex. There's going to be a lot of numbers up on the screen and to make it easier just go to my website and use my towing calculator. You can type all of those numbers in and then that will figure out all the maths for you. And I will summarise everything at the end, so you'd, um, if you want to skip straight there, that's fine. If you want to see how I got to those conclusions, well, that's the detail I'm going to go through now. All right, so the other thing I will say is that there's lots of different options. So there's different bed lengths. So the F-150, for example, comes in two trail bed lengths there, 5.5 or 6.5 um, feet, and a similar for uh, Ram 1500. There's obviously different trim levels, etc., um, different engine types, and so on. What you've really got to look at is that specific vehicle you're buying, and I've just taken examples here. You can apply those same principles with the towing calculators to your own specific situation. So let's start by looking at the dimensions then, and particularly length and width. So start with the Tundra, 5.955, um, 2040 millimetres wide, then the F-150, Ram 1500 and the Ranger for the comparison again. And what we see there is that these vehicles are definitely longer than the Ranger, longer wheelbase as well. That means that you've got a greater turning circle um, and they might stick out a bit from car parks because they're a bit longer there. The width isn't really too much of a problem, but the extra length tends to be in the bed as well. And if I put the longer F-150, you can see the difference between the two types there. Now let's take a look at power and torque, because it's not just about torque for towing. If you've got a lot of torque but no power, you're going to be going up hills but extremely slowly, so you have to have power as well. Now everyone gets very um, excited about power and torque figures, but the main criteria for a tow car is actually probably more engine cooling and also certainly the ability of the tow car to control the weight, not how fast it can pull it up a hill. But anyway, for whatever it's worth, here's the numbers. This means that uh, engine kilowatt output, that's the torque and that's how many kilograms each kilowatt has to shift and I just put the numbers up there and you can see that um, um, as the Tundra actually uh, wins that battle so it's got the most powerful and they're all 10 speeds apart from the Ram which is 8 to be honest 8 10 speed doesn't really make any difference once you get above 8 ratios it's it's pretty close ratio anyway now warranty um, all of these cars with the exception of the Ram have a five-year unlimited warranty and Ram is definitely behind at three years only a hundred thousand now range is how far you can drive and this is pretty simple calculation of just taking the fuel consumption divided it by 90% of the fuel tank and said that's um, how far you're able to drive 885 kilometers 979 642 and the Ranger not surprisingly being the only diesel um, does in fact uh, win that battle but shout out to Ford for having a large fuel tank well done um, and that gives the f-150 a great range now the other thing here is that remember that petrol fuel consumption tends to rise quicker than diesel when you're towing um, and if you want a long range tank you can certainly buy one for vehicles like rangers i don't know if there's going to be long range tanks for all of these vehicles so um, you may be needing to take um, extra jerry cans all right now let's take a look at payload which is how much the vehicle can carry in total versus its unladen weight so tundra is 758 kilograms and its unladen weight is 2778 then we've got the f-150 again working off the short wheel base here 769 um, the 1500 is ram 1500 931 and the ranger actually wins that and you're going well hang on that's the that's the smallest one well what you find there interestingly enough is that um uh, the big American utes tend to have very poor payload as you can see these are all bigger heavier vehicles um, with unladen weight than the Ranger but the Ranger actually has and true of most utes the, the, uh, the best payload. Now heavy weight is actually good for towing you want a car which is heavier than your trailer so that's an advantage and also the fact there's a longer wheelbase the distance between the front axle and rear axle makes these, these vehicles more stable as well so um, weight is one of the, is good when you're towing. 
Now let's take a look at the claimed maximum tow and a maximum tow ball mass. So all of these uh, large utes are claimed to tow 4,500 kilograms and they all can in very specific circumstances. We're going to get to that. And they all have a maximum tow ball mass of 450 kilograms. Our comparison ranger is 3,500 and 350. So that's the differences there. Um, but remember that when you tow above 3,500, you do need a different coupling. Typically use a 70 mil hitch as opposed to the standard 50 mil hitch, which you'd use for something like, like a Ranger. Now let's take a look at the GCM calculation because when you do toke ca limit calculations you've got to do about eight calculations to see which of the limits you're going to come to first. You can't just look at one and go oh, that, that's what it is. I know a lot of um, articles I've read just do one simple calculation and that's okay but you've got to be aware that um, uh, it's actually quite complex and that's why I've written that towing calculator. So here's an example. Let's say we've got a 3,000 kilogram curb weight and we tow a 4,500 kilogram trailer um, and we've got an 8,000 kilogram GCM which is gross combination mass, that's our limit. Well we take 8,000 minus 45 500 minus 3000 and that's we have 500 kilograms of payload left by that calculation. Now there might be other calculations we do such as rear axle load or GVM or whatever the case may be which mean that our total payload isn't 500 it could be less than that but it's not going to be any more than that so that's the GCM. Okay, may exceed other limits first, very important. So let's take that example and apply it to the vehicles then. So we have 547 for the Tundra, F-150 769 and uh, Ram 1500 69 and the range is NA because it can't do 4500. Now remember, and that's F-150 winning, that this excludes tow ball mass. So you've got to take tow ball mass out of this. The tow ball mass is variable. It may not be 10%. The 10% is a maximum. You should not assume that 10% is the best figure. It's a maximum there. So it gives you an idea of what this would be like. And that's kind of useful for fifth wheelers as well, where you don't have a tow ball mass because hopefully you've got the, um, you've got the, uh, the turntable in ahead of the rear axle. Now remember that um, F-150 GCM is the GVM plus maximum tow so the GCM limit doesn't affect payload. With the rest of the vehicles the GCM is actually less than the sum of the maximum tow and the GVM which is why it's affected. So the 769 here is, the, um, is unaffected so that's, that's good work by Ford. Now here's why um, I'm not including the at Silver Rider LTZ Premium. Um, this is the actual figures for it 254 curb, 4500 trailer, 7160 GVM, and then um, we take one from the other, and we end up with 117 kilograms of um, payload, and that's just on GCM before we look at any other limit, and actually gets lower from there. And it's only got a 422 kilogram maximum table mass, and it really should be 450. Again, I'm not suggesting you should always, always should tow at 450 with a four and a half ton trailer, but you should have the option to do so. So that's why I'm not really looking at the LTZ premium. All right, now let's take a look at what payload we've got when we are towing four and a half um, tons uh, with and, and from a GVM perspective. So this is simply going to be 758 kilograms of payload. I'm going to assume we're running that 450 kilogram max. We end up with 308 kilograms and 319 for this one, 481, and the range again is NA. So the winner there is the Ram um, 1500. So again, that's assuming you are running that maximum tow ball mass. Now let's take a look at the rear axle load and to explain how we do that I need to go through an example. So here are the actual figures for the F-150 short wheel base, 1423 um, kilos on the rear axle, 1048 on the rear, that gives us a split of 58%, 42% and I'm calculated that's about 30% overhang compared to the wheelbase. And on the long wheelbase, sorry, that was the long wheelbase, and the short wheelbase version, it's fairly similar, but 33% um, percent and the numbers slightly change there. I do have numbers for the Tundra, but I don't have the overhang number. I could calculate that from an image, but I haven't done that. Um, 57, 43%. So that gives you an idea of the front and rear weight distribution, which is important because then we know how much rear axle load is going to be used up. So here's, here's how it will work. We take the wheelbase and we're going to assume 30% 
of the wheelbase is to overhang. We're going to assume 57%, 43% on front and rear, unless I have specific figures otherwise, which I do for two of the vehicles. And this is how it works. So we have 450 kilograms again, um, that's just the example, pressing down as our tow ball mass. We multiply that by 1.3, and that means there's 585 kilograms pressing down on the rear axle. So we're going to add that to the rear axle load, but we also reduce the front axle load by 135 kilograms in total. So we add 450 to the GVM as you've, uh, to the curb weight as you've seen um, earlier on, but what we then need to do is add 585 kilograms to the rear axle and see how we get on. So let's do that. Now, um, assuming 1.3 tow ball mass, uh, factor and 43% on the rear axle unless I've got a specific weight for it. Um, Ford Ranger is going to be NA. Here we've got 850 is the limit, 1207 over the rear axle, minus the 585, that gives us only 58 kilograms. Now Toyota have said that, um, and this is my estimate by the way because I don't know the exact uh, rear overhang, Toyota have said that they do have an LDH, load distribution hitch, otherwise known as a weight distribution hitch, which you um, can fit if you want to tow really heavy, and that will reduce the rear axle load limit. For the F-150 it's looking a lot better um, because that's not got that much weight over the rear axle and again its rear axle load is pretty high so 243 kilograms. The Ram 1500 is looking reasonable as well, 192. Um, so the F-150 wins that particular battle. Now with the Silverado that can only do 422 kilograms of total mass and even then it's, it's 65 kilograms by my calculations. Um, away from the rear axle load limit. Again, some of these figures, they are estimates, but I don't think they're way out, and it would apply to your specific vehicle um, on a specific way, but just to give you an idea. All right, now let's take a look at the payload towing 3,500 kilograms. So we're just gonna go with the GCM this time, GCM minus the curb weight minus 3,500, and these utes start to look really good at this point because they've actually got pretty good payloads. Um, and the Ranger starts to look awful now. Why? Because the Ranger's GCM is still quite low for its um, GVM plus its braked tow. So if you want to tow three and a half tons, these big utes, they are looking good. They are not looking good for four and a half tons. They're looking good for three and a half tons. Whereas the Ranger does not look good for a three and a half ton tow. Again, you should be looking to tow three quarters, two thirds of the maximum. So um, the uh, Ram 1500 wins that one. And remember, um, this, these figures exclude tow ball mass, so you need to take tow ball mass away from that, that again is variable there, and um, with these big utes there's no payload reduction when you tow only at 3500 kilograms. And the Ranger, if we added the tow ball mass from a GCM calculation that wouldn't change because the limit here is GCM not, not GVM. All right, now let's take a look at the payload when we're towing 3500, and we're just going to take the payload figure, take 350 kilograms off that, um, and see what we get. So here we've got 408 kilograms, 419, and in the Ranger 610. And again, remember the Ranger had the highest payload here, so on this measure, the Ranger does better than those utes. That doesn't mean to say it's a better tow car at 3500 at all, it just means you've got the most payload left over, and um, the uh, Ram 1500 wins that one out of the big utes. Um, but I give the Ranger a tick for coming up above 600 kilos. Now let's take a look at the payload towing 3,500 kilograms from a rear axle perspective. And again, assumption 43% unladen weight on the rear axle, 1.3 tow ball mass factor, 188, 373, 322. And the Ranger, again, is very good because remember that had a really high payload to begin with and um, that, that's what, why that, that's doing pretty well. So you see, depending on which limit you calculate, you get a different best vehicle. Isn't it amazing? Uh, F-150 wins that one. And Ranger, gold tick. All right, so summarise then. Um, out of everything we looked at, the Tundra won nothing. Um, apart from power to weight, which it really isn't that important. The F-150 got the best range, um, and it won GCM limit and rear axle limit, and the Ram 1500 um, got the best payload, and that one. So if you want to tow four and a half tons, I'd be looking at these two, um, not so much the Tundra. If you want to tow three and a half tons, all of them come into play very nicely indeed, and that's just what, what the numbers say. So um, best for towing 4,500, none. Best for 400. 4,000 4, below um, those two, and two-thirds max tow is what you really should be looking at. Now, if you want to tow real heavy, well, here are the two vehicles you want to be looking at. The Silverado HTZ Premium, um, 
and the Ram 2500. These are the bigger versions of those utes and those are the ones that are more capable of towing 2500 because they're even bigger, even heavier and they've got huge limits and huge payloads. And I have towed with vehicles like this. And let me tell you, I would definitely want to have one of these in front of a trailer, four tons, not those sort of large American utes. These are the huge American utes, if, if you like, so, so buy one of those. Now, my generalised advice is here as to what you should tow. What This is fairly generalised, but again, just tow about two thirds of capacity. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thank you for watching.